Hi everyone, this is National Master Dennis Juanacrucis, and this week we're going to take a look at the 13th place game from the uh, U.S. Chess League's 2007 season. Um, white in this game was Mackenzie Molnar, and black was Mark Arnold, and this is from week five in a match between the New Jersey and New York teams. And this is a game that I, I kind of liked. I, well, I, I think they're all, almost all these games have been very good, but this one kind of struck my fancy because it featured an opening that used to be popular when I was an up-and-comer many years ago. So uh, let's take a look, and we'll see it had some, some very interesting moments here. Okay, so we've got a, a knight or Sicilian, which is almost always good for very sharp play. And here, instead of the currently fashionable burn variation, well, it's either the burn variation if black plays e5, or the English attack if black plays e6. So instead of this, white played the old main line with bishop to g5. Now, the reason this has gone a little bit uh, out of fashion is on account of the poison pawn variation. So black's results in the 70s and 80s, and even the 90s with this, were so good that basically white's best options involved uh, heading for forced draw variations, really. I mean, white was winning very few games um, after a long time. I mean, there were a lot of interesting tries, and white kept finding new ideas, but it seemed to kind of work its way out to, to basically a draw, or black maybe even being a little bit better. But... Um, new ideas come into fashion, and in fact, nowadays, after queen to d2, queen takes, rook over, the old, very old, e5 line has become uh, pretty pretty topical again, uh, especially last year. So 2007, there were a whole bunch of games played in this variation at top-level play. Um, now, it seems like they've maybe worked things out to some extent, and black is doing okay, but I don't know that it's worked out to uh, anything really stale. I mean, I, I certainly think that this can be played very successfully at amateur level. Okay, well, anyway, in addition to e5, there's f5, which is at least depending on the status of e5 right now. f5 has, has been the main line for a long time. But bishop takes f6, and bishop to e2 are also quite important. Anyway, um, as a result of this, as I said, bishop to g5 has kind of gone out of fashion, but it's, uh, it's still a very dangerous system, and you can't play the knight off without really knowing what you're doing against bishop to g5. Okay, well in our game, Arnold, um, for whatever reason, either out of preference or out of fear that his opponent had something nasty prepared for him in the poison pawn, chose bishop to e7. And now we head for the old main line. And this is the most main of main lines. It was b99 in the ECO code. Okay, so castles, knight b to d7, g4, b5. Notice that white isn't threatening to play e5 because of bishop to b7. Okay, so this is no good. So g5 is normal, and now f5. So white is exerting pressure against the pawn in e6, and in some lines, as we'll see, he's going to play f6 as well, is another idea. And really white has to make something happen, because if black can just finish his development without anything bad happening to him, it's going to be a very, very tough game for white. Because all the black's pieces are going to have a great square, so the bishop's going to go to b7, the knight goes to c5, and then white's e-pawn becomes quite weak, especially when you consider that b4 is threatened. Also, black may follow up with rook to c8, and you'll have pressure on the c-file as well. So white really has to, to take advantage of his lead in space and development while he still can. All right, now here black has a couple of very important possibilities. Let me get rid of all of this uh, debris here. Okay, so one possibility, not knight to e5, which I should delete, but bishop takes g5, king to b1, and now knight to e5. So black is won a pawn, and um, his pieces have very good control of the dark squares, but white regains it, and in fact ends up with very good control over the light squares. So for example, after queen to h5, attacking the bishop, notice it's actually a double attack, he's threatening the bishop, and he's threatening f takes e6 and black really can't do anything about the dual threats. So if, for example, he plays queen e7, white just takes, say with the knight, bishop takes, pawn takes, g6. Uh, he can't take with the queen because the bishop would hang, so it's just overloaded. And of course, pawn takes is illegal because the king is, is um, in check in that variation. Okay, so say g6, takes, takes, queen h3. And you can see 
White's got great control over light squares. Knight goes to, to d5. This queen is cutting across here. And uh, also sometimes the queen retreats, let's say, to e2. Then he plays h4, h5, hitting this pawn. The bishop comes to h3, and so on. So white's got the light squares. Black's got this great knight on the dark square, e5. Bishop's on g7. Queen's on e7. The king goes to g7, another dark square there. And what often happens in this line is that both sides are kind of immune to the other side's um, strong points. And it's a fairly high, there are a fairly high percentage of draws in, the, in this variation. So white does a little bit better. I mean, it's not just uh, a dead draw or anything, but it's, uh, it's a bit more static. Okay, so in our, in our game, though, Arnold went for the, uh, the, the more, well, certainly the riskier and sharper. I don't know if it's more principled, but it's, uh, it's certainly a, a more bold approach with knight to c5. Okay, so this this resumes the um, the typical black plan of pressuring the e4 pawn. So again, bishop to b7, b4 is coming. And uh, also notice that, in fact, taking back bishop to b7, black is in fact already threatened to play b4. And when the knight moves, let's say, to e2, to then play knight takes e4, and if queen takes e4, bishop to b7, with the skewer getting the rook on h1. Okay, so white needs to again play very actively here before black's counterplay is in full gear. So f6 takes takes, bishop to f8. And now we have um, a, maybe a last really crucial um, moment as far as the theory of the variation goes. Moeller chose bishop to h3, which is really very much a sideline. The two more, I would say, significant variations, and certainly more popular variations, are first queen to h5, which is the old main line, and rook to g1, which is the contemporary main line, which was developed by the late Hungarian international master Bela Perenyi in either the late 70s or early 80s. Okay, so queen to h5, this is, uh, again, traditional move, and it's, it's a very sensible one. It's putting pressure against this pawn on f7, making it at least difficult at first glance for black to place a line bishop to d7 and castle long, because he'll simply hang the pawn. On the other hand, if black plays something like bishop to b7, well, now you can get in trouble. It's something like bishop to h3. And so now the threat is to play knight takes e6. So, for example, if knight e4, knight e6, and black's position is going to creak in a real hurry here. Okay, uh, black could castle long, but then white has another nice move, knight to d5, taking advantage of yet another pin. All right, so instead of that, um, black might consider, oops, we already did this. So yeah, instead of bishop to b7, actually the best move is bishop to d7, funny enough. And after bishop to h3, first b4, so we kick the knight away, and now castles with the neat point that after queen takes f7, uh, not knight takes e4, because then white grabs on e6 with a fantastic position, but instead bishop to h6 check first, rook d to f8, kicking the queen out, and now rook takes f6, which protects the bishop, protects the e-pawn, and, of course, regains material equality. So black is, is okay here, and um, the game can continue with rook h to f1. Black wants to keep the rook on f6. And, um, again, this is, I think, a, a fairly significant position, theoretically, one that players with white who want to play bishop to g5 should know about. Uh, and also black players if they don't want to play the poison pawn or some other system. Okay, so that's um, that's what happens on queen h5. All right, uh, on rook to g1, uh, there's a lot of just tremendous theory on this, and I, I heartily recommend that you, you explore this. Um, but if, if we go down this rabbit trail, we'll never come back. So I'll just mention that the main line right now continues h5, and now rook to e1, with all kinds of ideas like rook to g7, knight to d5, and in some positions after e takes d5 and e takes d5, this knight leaps into e6 with just real havoc uh, on the board. So really just delightfully uh, crazy variation. Okay, well, it didn't happen in our game. Molnar played bishop to h3, and here it kind of paid off because Arnold didn't know that the main move was b4, or perhaps he was just scared to play it. But b4 is in fact best. White plays knight to d5, the traditional Sicilian sack, but 
while it's dangerous, it looks like black is actually okay. So for example, after e takes d5, ed, bishop h3, rook h to e1, and king to d8, white has, um, well, all his pieces are very well placed, it's just that he doesn't have enough pieces. So after, for example, um, knight to c6 check, now queen h3 has been played. This might even be better, but I think black is in good shape after queen to d7, knight c6, say queen h4, a5, king to b1, and now rook to g8. And so although white has uh, a couple of pawns, at least he will have a couple of pawns if he takes on h7, and white, you know, white, black is a little bit tied down. I mean, the bishop on f8 can't move. So this guy is kind of stuck because of the possibility of rook to e7. So, you know, white does have some play pretty clearly, but it's probably not enough for a piece. I mean, the burden is definitely on white to prove adequate compensation here. Okay, so that's queen eight takes h3, which I think is probably objectively best. Knight to c6 has happened um, much, much more often, but I don't know that it's really that strong. So king to c8, queen takes, king to b7, and here, as, as Nunn says in his book on the, uh, the bishop to g5 knight, or it's an old book from 96, 96 or 7, but for a line like this, it's probably pretty accurate. I mean, there hasn't been a tremendous amount of action on bishop to h3 on move 16. Anyway, just to give one game between uh, Siosaltia, hope I'm not mispronouncing his name, and Fisher from the Natania 1968 tournament, uh, Black was able to win pretty, pretty quickly. So knight takes b4, queen d7, queen h5, and now a good move by Fisher, plays rook to g8. So again, jettisoning the h-pawn to, to get his pieces active. White brought the knight back to c6, a5, so another very good move, kind of locking the uh, the knight in, and maybe preparing as a defensive resource, rook a6, b6, if need be. Okay, white took, rook to g6, king to b1, and black recaptures on f6. And the problem here for white is that he just doesn't have any way to make this attack work. So, okay, rook to d4, queen f5. And you can see all of black's pieces are coming to, to very nice, useful squares. He's ready to bring the queens to a square like f2, which will force a trade of queens. And what does white have? Not really anything. His rooks don't have access to the b file. And uh, he tried b4, which is as good as anything, but while it gives him the b file, it turns out that the king is completely snug on c7. And here, white just resigned. So he's, he's got two pawns for the piece, but the pawns are pretty meaningless here. His king's position is now kind of exposed and um, just has no attack at all. Okay, so going back, bishop h3, b4 as we saw is probably the best move. White's attack really doesn't look very convincing. Instead, Arnold played h5, and, and while this is a logical move, taking away the h5 square from white's queen, it's, uh, it just wasn't necessary. Okay, so Muller played rook h to e1, building up bishop to d7, and now here Molnar showed that he wasn't as familiar with the, uh, the theory of this line as maybe he ought to have been. So instead of, uh, well, what he should have played was the move e5, and this is, this is recommended in Nunn's book, and um, led to a quick success in a, a postal game that continued with d5. So d5 looks very logical, keeping the center closed and blocking the long diagonal. Unfortunately, it fails on both counts. So white played knight takes d5, e takes d5, e6, after knight e6, bishop e6, black simply resigned. And um, I think one, one convincing line is just this, bishop takes e6, now knight e6, rook e6 check, queen d5, and it looks to me like black is toast. I mean, this um, discovered check is, is bound to be fatal, of course he's also threatening the rook on uh, a8. Well, actually, he's not threatening that because of bishop to h6 checks. So I, I take that part back, but um, the threat of the discovered and double checks is, um, is is just too much. If he tries, for example, king to g6 to get out of the way, well, he's just going to get mated here. Rook to g1, king goes to h6. Uh, if he goes to h7, then just queen takes h5, and it's mate next move. Um, so king h6, f7, queen h5, queen h6, mate. So um, pretty hopeless if black plays d5. But black could 
Castle Long. Uh, here, too, I think white is clearly better uh, after something like e takes d6, making sure that the diagonal stays open. Bishop takes, and now bishop to g2. So after something like king, uh, bishop takes h2, b4, rook to d3. Threats like knight c to e2 and then rook c3 are really going to cause black a, a lot of trouble. And then maybe the knight goes to c6. And this is just very, very difficult. I mean, I think white's position, at least practically speaking, is much easier and probably close to winning. So I think Molnar should have played e5. So the theoretical suggestion seems to be, seems to be correct. OK, well, he was apparently out of his, uh, his book, too. And the movie played is, is quite a reasonable one. I mean, White, White still has a good game after this. And it's just a, it's a very natural sacrifice in the Sicilian. With the point that after the capture, which is what happens, you've got an open E file. The knight might come to C6 or to E6. And he certainly has tremendous compensation. Uh, there is an alternative possibility. And in fact, it happened in the only game that I think reached the position after knight to d5. And there, black played queen to b7. But after knight to e7, black is, I think, in, in real trouble. He can't castle. And if he plays bishop takes e7, f e7, well, he still can't castle. Plus, white has the very strong threat of queen to f6, followed by rook to g1, wherever black's rook goes. So um, that, I think, is going to be a very, very difficult position for black to, to tolerate. So I think Arnold's decision is the right one. So if he's, uh, he's going to have to suffer, if white's going to have a very strong attack in any case, might as well have a piece for it. Might as well have something that gives you a chance. So e takes d5, e takes d5, king to d8. And here I would suggest that um, you stop the recording and try to figure out what white's best plan is. So there's no, there's no crushing tactical blow that wins. I mean, I think the position is roughly balanced with, uh, with best play. But take, take a few minutes, maybe five minutes longer if you're, if you're patient, less if you're not. But, but give it a try. See if you can figure out what White's plan ought to be. Because uh, I think there's at least, at least three pretty decent ways that he can, he can try to proceed. OK, well, let me identify these three plans. and. See how you did. And, and maybe you found a fourth. That's perfectly good. So uh, just because I don't mention the plan that you came up with isn't necessarily a guarantee that there's anything wrong with it. OK, well one try is knight to e6 check. And this is the best time for it. So after f takes e6, d takes e6, we have three threats. So we're threatening to take the rook, we're threatening to take the bishop, and we're threatening e7 check. And the reason why I said it's the best time is that black does have to take on e6 because, of course, the, the queen on c7 is hanging. It's part of a fork. So fe, de, and now queen c6 is the best move, uh, offering a trade of queens and uh, protecting the rook with gain of time. OK, so queen to f2, knight takes e6. And now bishop to g2 might look good at first, but when we realize that black has three pieces for the rook, we can pretty easily reject this line. So the best thing for white is to take the knight instead. And after we have this, this capture, here I think black is in quite good shape because um, while white's pieces are all very active, he only has one pawn for the, uh, for the piece. And maybe more importantly, black's king is ready to escape via c7, either to b8 or to b6, but basically to achieve um, a pretty, pretty comfortable position. OK, so that's, uh, that's one possibility. So knight to e6, while it's not a bad move, I think perhaps gives black a slightly preferable position. The second try is knight to c6 check. OK, now here, if black were to take, I don't think very highly of this line because black's king is going to have a very hard time finding its way to safety. Uh, it's cut off on the diagonal, and there are always going to be threats that way. And the e-file's open, the d-file's half, half open. The pawn in c6 is a very, a very nice uh, attacker in its own right. And there might be possibilities of c7 check in some positions when the queen moves. So I think this isn't the best way for black to play. So after knight to c6, I think he should bring the king to c8. And um, you know, rook to e8 check is kind of a blank shot. I mean, there's just nothing happening after rook e8 and king b7. So no real, no real follow-up here. 
But after king to b1, I think he can just uh, kind of build a little bit, but it probably just kind of dead ends out into a draw. So knight to a4, white plays knight to a5 check. And here I think at the end of the day, white really just doesn't anything better than knight to c6 check, king to b7, knight to a5 check. And um, king can't go to b8 because the knight hangs. If he goes to a7, that just repeats. And if he goes to, uh, to c7, uh, I don't know if there's a forced loss against this, but I feel awfully squeamish about a move like, let's say, rook to d3, followed by rook to c3 check. So I, I, as far as I can tell, only black can get in trouble here. I don't, I don't think this is anything that white should be afraid to enter. Okay. So knight to c6 is good for a draw but no more. So what Muller chose was bishop takes d7. And while this gives black a little bit more space for his king to run around on, and uh, and I think black is um, also happy to make an exchange of pieces, of course, too. Nevertheless, this gives him pretty uh, fair line, long square control over the light squares. By getting rid of the defender that black has of the light squares, it gives white um, at least dominance over them. All right, well, let's see how this works out in practice. So queen takes d7, and now a good move by white. Not knight to c6 check, but knight to e6. So this is very clever. All right, well, now I think black should probably play d takes e, uh, f, sorry, f takes e6, d e, queen b7. So again, we have that same situation where we've got that, that triple threat. So to take on d7 to play e7, and to grab the rook, and black plays queen to, uh, to b7. e7 takes, and now a very nice move. You might want to even try to find it. So give you a chance to stop the uh, the recording here. Okay, so it's not f takes e7, king c7, and, and black is in very good shape here. It's just clearly better. Um, the problem for, for white here is that the e file is now closed to his rook. So if he could play rook takes e7, take his own pawn, then he just wins. So the best move here, for that reason and for other reasons, is queen to f5. So it's uh, just marking time here. So he'd like to play rook takes, F, rook takes e7. He's also threatening fe still. And of course, he's also threatening queen takes c5, exploiting the pin on the, uh, on the d file. So after bishop to f8, queen c5, queen c7. I think black is OK here, but any result is possible. I mean, all three results are still possible. And this is a bit better off. White, white's a bit better off here than he is in this situation, which is kind of similar. So in both cases, white just has the one pawn for the rook, uh, sorry, for the bishop. Um, but here, black is escaping quite easily. Well, here, um, it's not so clear. So, I mean, white's queen moves away someplace, and to get the king to a square like b8 is not going to be as easy as it is in the other variation. Okay, so f takes e6, the point is... Um, I think is the better try. So black is all right. It's unclear. But after king to c8, knight takes c5, d takes c5, d6, well, white is up, sorry, while well black is up a piece for just one single pawn, and it's a blockaded pawn at that, um, despite this, I think white has excellent winning chances here. I mean, I think black is actually in trouble. So it's it's remarkable. But white has a very conceptually simple plan but it's awfully difficult for black to do anything about it. Um, again, let me let me just uh, challenge you you guys to um, to stop the recording and see if you can figure out what white's what white's tactical idea. Is. So it's obviously taking the rook on the corner. That's not it. Um, but you know, let's say the rook moves to a7 or the king goes to b8. What does white have then? Try to try to uh, figure that out. Just take a few minutes and see what what ideas come to mind. Okay, I assume you've all done that, and if not, this is your last chance. White's idea, as we'll see in the game, is remarkably simple, but uh, devastatingly effective. And it's essentially this, to play queen to d5, centralizing the queen and protecting the, the d6 pawn, maybe overprotecting it in some cases, and then with proper preparation to simply play rook to e7. And as it turns out, between the attacking prospects that he gets from that, and the past pawns, it's incredibly difficult for black to survive, and I'm frankly not sure that he can. Okay, well, let's take a quick look at one possibility. 
Rook to a7 was played in the game. If king to b8, queen to d5. So rook to a7, king to b1. It's getting out of the way of bishop to h6 ideas. Rook to g8, queen takes c5, picking up another pawn and opening the c-file. Queen to d8, rook to d3. Uh, the point of rook to d3 is that um, we don't want to play rook to e7 right away because after bishop takes e7, let's say d takes e7, the rook hangs on d1. So we're just taking care of that by playing rook to d3 while also giving uh, ourselves the possibility of playing rook d to e3 and rook to e8, or maybe in some cases rook to c3 and attacking on the c-file. Just gives lots of uh, options to white. Okay, so rook to d7, rook e7. So there it is. It's just white doesn't care how many pieces black has on the e7 square. He's got it covered with the pawn. So bishop takes, f takes this time, queen c8. Queen f2, just a nice quiet move here. And now black's best is probably b4 to prevent rook to, uh, to c3. But even so, after queen to d4, even though black is a rook up for just a couple of pawns, uh, he's still in really serious trouble here. So those pawns on d6 and d7 especially just keep him tied down. His, uh, his king is a bit exposed. The b pawn might hang. And um, white, white has an edge here. But this is probably about the best that black can do. Okay, so that was after d6 playing king to b8. In the game, Arnold chose rook to a7, which is probably okay too. In fact, after queen to d5, uh, king to b8 would just transpose to the line we were looking at a moment ago. All right, instead he played c4. And maybe this is a little bit of, a, of an inaccuracy. I mean, he saves the pawn, but it's giving up a tempo here and uh, also weakening the dark squares. Okay, so queen to c5, king to b8, and um, here maybe white can already play rook to e7, but okay, he's not really hurting anything. And, and again, the problem, the real difficulty for black is figuring out how to stop this plan. So uh, consider that your, your challenge. Try to figure out what black can do against this, this rook to e7 plan. Okay, well in the game he played rook to b7, white played rook to d5, taking care of the back rank issue, so he can play rook t7 and recapture with the pawn if he wants. Black played h4. Uh, he could have tried rook to g7, or sorry, rook to g8. Again, uh, hoping to exploit the back rank, but simply a3 takes care of all those problems. So let's say king to a8, just a pass move. Rook e7 takes, pawn takes, rook to d7. Uh, if queen to c7 is queen to d4, and then rook to d8 happens. And if black plays rook to b8 to stop it, then rook to d7 is, is winning. So rook to c7, queen to d4, queen c6, rook to d6, queen b7, check here. So it's remarkable. I mean, white can even afford to exchange rooks, even though he's down a rook, because these pawns are just too strong. any queens. So, um, you know, not every move there was forced, but it's a typical variation. It shows the danger that these two uh, massive passed pawns on d6 and e7 can cause. Okay, so going back here, black played h4, white played a3, so another little prophylactic move, h3. Now here I think white could have played rook to e7, but instead he played queen to d4, which is actually very clever. So he's kind of setting up an Elyekin's gun situation, or at least two-thirds of it. So it's when you've got the heavy pieces lined up on the same on the same file, and you stick the queen in the back, so that way the uh, the least, or at least the less vulnerable piece, um, the less well less valuable piece, let's say, goes in the back. Um, the more expendable piece goes in the front. Okay, so after queen to d4, black played rook to g8, and now finally, rook to e7. And this is, this is just lights out. It's remarkable. Um, if he takes, so let's suppose he plays bishop takes e7, d takes e7, and what is black going to do about the threat of rook to d8? I mean, that's a real problem, because the rook is going to hang on g8, and black doesn't want to take on d8, because then white captures with the pawn, promotes, makes a queen, and it's simply over. So black needs to protect the, uh, the rook on, on g8 
so that when rook to d8 check comes, he doesn't have to capture. But it turns out it's really hard to find a good way to do that. If you try queen to g4, well, you just trade queens and make a new one. That's obviously hopeless. If you try queen to c8, and then after rook to d8, play rook to e8, but there's a problem with this. So see if you can figure out what white should do in this position. It looks like black is constructing a little bit of a defense, but white has a very convincing way of just eliminating all resistance quickly. All right, so I hope you figured it out. The answer is not rook takes c8, which probably is winning in the long run anyway. I mean, it's hard to really envision black coming out of this game alive with so many weak pawns. But <coughs> instead, rook takes e8. So that would have been the slow way to win with rook takes c8. This is much faster. Queen e8, queen of d8, and it's just over. Okay, so that means that after rook to e7, Arnold can't capture the rook. And he tried queen of d8, covering the back rank, staying in front of the d pawn. It's very logical. But now, Molnar found another nice move. Queen to e5. This has the, uh, the sinister idea, of course, of rook to e8, most obviously. But there's the further point that if, let's say, bishop takes e7, de is discovered check. So it hits the queen and hits the king. And after queen c7, another nice tactical blow, rook to d8, exploiting the, um, the, uh, the pin. So rook takes, and you make a new queen with check and win. Or, of course, if black plays king to a7, then just... Oh, I'm sorry, not rook takes g8, but queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, and again, white's making a queen. Another possibility after queen to e5 is king to a7, so just getting out of the way of, well, the 8th rank and also the discoveries. But here, too, simply d7 is just winning. I mean, what can black do? He's, he's just stuck there. Uh, bishop takes, f takes, again, wins gobs and gobs of material. And uh, if black doesn't find anything clever, then white's going to just play rook to e8 and promote the pawn. So in the game, Arnold tried b4, hoping perhaps to uh, either open up the, the b-file with ba, or maybe to play b3, hoping for a mating net. And of course, that really tells us what the answer is. The threat is rook to g1 check, king to a2, and then b3. c takes b3, c takes b3 mate. I mean, so that's, that's the idea. White could play queen to e1 after rook to g1 check, giving away the queen, but that would be would be hopeless as well. So uh, white played a takes b4, which we can now see is kind of logical. Of course, he wants to have flight for his king, but that was unnecessary. He could have actually just played d7 check and then queen to e3 check, and, and that seems to be good enough to win, and then rook to e8. Okay, so a takes b4, and um, so now, of course, if rook to g1 check, king a2, there's no mate. And you could try rook to takes b4, hoping to give mate with rook to a4, but white just plays b3, cb, and black just runs out of attack here. So this would have been good enough to win had black played rook to g1, but he played rook takes b4. And again, his hope is to play rook to g1 check, and then rook to a4 mate. Now, white played a very natural human move, and it's more than good enough to win. There's a, a funny computer variation, though, I'll just show, because it's uh, it's kind of elegant, but it's also something that only a computer would do. I mean, a human would never play like this. Maybe in a correspondence game, but, but not over the board. Okay, so d7 check is our starting point, king a8, and now queen to e4, with the, the smart alecky idea that if rook to g1 check, Hoping again for king a2, rook a4, mate. White plays rook to d1, which is also check. And simply wins by picking up the rook. So after queen to e4, king to b8. Okay, now queen to e1. Covering the back rank and threatening to take on b4 with check. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Queen takes e7. So more, more flash here. But white can simply accept the, uh, the sacrifice with, with thanks. Rook to g1, king a2, rook a4, queen a3. So very easy to overlook these backward diagonal moves, especially when the route there was impeded earlier in the uh, combination. So fine for a computer to play like this, not for a human. But probably it's the most accurate way to con continue. 
At any rate, Molnar's play was proper, played rook to d1, taking care of the back rank issues. Black played rook to b5, and now let me uh, give you a final challenge here to figure out what white should play in this position. So how, how ought white to deal with um, black's last line of resistance? Take a minute or two, see if you can figure it out. Okay, well, I'm not going to take a minute or two, but I'll hope and assume that you guys did. And the answer, which I trust you all discovered, was rook to e8, just counterattacking. Black has no choice but to take the white queen. White recaptures black's queen. And now, simply d7, and black has nothing he can do that's at least worthwhile to meet the, uh, the simple threat to promote this pawn. For example, by rook to b8 check and then d8 queen, but quite possibly with something simple like rook to e8 or rook to c8. I mean, black is really completely at white's mercy here. I mean, and his bishop on f8, far from being an asset, in fact, is even a little bit of a liability because it, it uh, impeded his own access to important squares on the a8 rank. So, very nice game by, by McKenzie. Um, no real errors. I mean, not playing e5 earlier was, I guess, an accuracy. And so that, I think, is that was the place where we could move, but yeah, right there. So instead of knight c5, e5. But overall, very, very well played game by him. A nice idea, and um, I think a game he should feel happy about. So I hope you enjoyed it, and um, remember, for those of you who have enjoyed this, to uh, to check out the work that I do on my blog as well, chessmind.powerblogs.com. I think you'll enjoy that too. So thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll see you next week with... Game of the week number 12. Goodbye.